In democratic nations, the legislature, which is usually occupied by the representatives of the people, has the duty of promoting national development through its chain of activities. The enactment of quality legislation and clear oversight on implementation of such laws are very critical elements of such responsibilities. The legislature in Delta State, South South Nigeria, has, in the last seven years of the administration of Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyo Koa, received renewed strength. Governor Koa's experience as a legislator in the Nigerian Senate has helped him to sustain the partnership between the executive and the legislative arms of government in the state for effective service delivery and the greater good of all Deltans. Your Excellency, being a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you have simply demonstrated through your rich experience that one of the ways our democracy can endure is by strengthening the relevant institutions. Your Excellency, we are also aware of many developmental projects being delivered by this government under your able leadership in the state. We equally acknowledge the feats will not have been realistic without the support and cooperation of a Delta State House Assembly. Let me assure His Excellency of the readiness of honorable members of the House of Assembly to partner with the administration to achieve a stronger Delta vision. Delta State is a very unique state. There's a good working relationship between the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature. There has been no time, there is a friction between the House and the judiciary. There has been no time, there is friction between the House and the executive. Uh, it's a point out of the fact that we are in synergy. The Delta State House of Assembly enjoys a very high independence and this has enabled the House to continue to run checks and balances as well as monitor and evaluate the executive arm of government in line with the provisions of the Nigerian Constitution. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria expects that in any case of abuse, mismanagement or overreach or wastefulness as it were by the executive shall be detected by the assembly and appropriate sanctions applied. Sanyata. Endowed with the power to legislate, the 7th Delta State House of Assembly, headed by Right Honorable Sharif Uberewari, is considered to be the most vibrant House of Assembly among the Committee of Assemblies in the Federation. The Delta State House of Assembly is one of the most vibrant House of Assembly in the country, just because of our uniqueness. Every bill we passed, including motions, on the floor of the house are people oriented and the builds. There's more unity now and there's more cooperation as a house. If you go around the states, you can see that there's development across the three central district. The arms of government, yes, their work is better, one government. There is strong synergy between the legislature and the executive because we believe that in cooperation that will the benefits of democracy will reach faster to their terms than any other method. I also believe in the philosophy of the Governor Senator Dr. Ifan Yokowa for building a stronger Delta and also the smart Delta agenda that he has. We must key into it because we as a legislature, we should be able to make bills for good governance of Delta State. The Oborewari-led assembly has deployed legislative powers to assist the executive arm to stabilize the state's economy and polity as well as integrate the different segments of society. The Assembly has effectively led innovation with several bills and laws passed and assented to by Governor Fanyokoa. The Governor has been very cooperative. He sends these bills accurately in need of people of Delta. And the coordination we are having, debate, um, having to consider the bills exclusively 
with consideration to the needs of everybody in each of the constituencies. And I confess, these bills have been coming right on time and to the need of Deltans. And that's why we've been having positive acceptance. Mr. Speaker, you have not raised any point of order. Mr. Speaker, I'm under your protection. Can you sit down, please? Thank you, the vibrant speaker of Delta State House Assembly. May your days be long, Mr. Speaker. In the process of making these laws, debates and counter-arguments usually pervade the atmosphere at plenary. Together, they make new legislations and amend the existing laws of the state. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion as moved by my honorable member from Ugeli, not one. I beg to second. Those in favor of the motion, as moved by the member representing Ugoli, not to say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes are it. All the bills are very important. Delta State, despite the separation of powers, we work collectively in the common interest of our people. And I must use this opportunity to appreciate the Delta State House of Assembly for the great job we've been doing for our people because in working together we found that it's as much better to be able to communicate to that people and to provide the dividends of democracy despite the very challenging moments that we have in our nation where the economy is dwindling and insecurity is high. Mr. Speaker, the first order on the other paper is... On the first day of March 2022, Smart Delta Media T was opportuned to capture the process of the legislative considerations for a law to regulate the financial management of Delta State and other related matters. The bill, having passed through thorough legislative scrutiny, was read the third time and passed on the floor of the State House of Assembly. Delta State Public Finance Management Bill 2021 and the amendments proposed thereto. I beg to move. The House, however, dissolved to the Committee of the Whole to relax the usual limits on debates, allowing more open exchange of views without the urgency of the final vote. Those in favor of the amendment, solved by the member representing Anusha say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Further amendments. Members representing their constituents who had interest in the bill took turns to air their opinions. That all queries from internal audit unit, inspectorate, development office of the Attorney General and all of that dealt with. And then there is a semicolon. And then there is an and that is supposed to be there that has been deleted. Mr. Chairman, my motion is for us to revisit that. Clause 24, section 1. One, yes. Mm -hmm. line, line, line three. Yes. It's meant to be cash and accrual basis, not basis. That's the first one. So it's like, that's a three, the three, line three. Yes, line so three. So it should be what? It should be, should not be I, I, S I S. Yes, S I S. Not basis. It's a bill that brought together all finance management bills in terms of transparency and accountability in the state. What this bill tried to do is to make sure we define responsibilities and duties, making sure that we know what you are answerable to, what your responsibilities are. It's about accountability because it's very, very important. It will at least guide the MDAs, accounting officers and all that, and how they will be able to manage their funds accrued to them to checkmate them, all the NDAs, this bill is very, very popular. It is on this floor that an ample amount of constructive and worthwhile laws and bills have been birthed. Laws to improve peace, security and the social economic life of the people have also remained a priority to the Governor of Delta State and the Assembly. Therefore, it is safe to say that the prevailing peaceful atmosphere and security enjoyed by Deltans is largely due to the peace and security initiatives of the governor in collaboration with the assembly. Since Governor Koa came in, since 2015 to date, the peaceful disposition of Delta State has attained unequal heights, like it has surpassed its predecessors. And when there is peace, there is development. So we've been enjoying peace 
So kudos to Governor Kowa. Before we used to hear community crisis, but the governor, being a grassroots man, he went into where every one of these crises or everything is brooding and say peace, peace, peace. We have to move the state to the next level. Okowa has been a, a very good uh, tool to the state. It's been a very, very peaceful state. It also gives rise for investors to come and apply their trade. The Delta State Security Trust Fund Bill was signed into law by His Excellency Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyo Kowa in 2016 to provide equipment and logistics support to security agencies in the state. I'm going to hand over uh, the keys to these two armored personnel carriers in addition to the one that has previously been delivered. We've been doing so well to keep the other state peaceful, of which, as the government, we are very grateful. And we are hoping that this will add on to the vehicle needs that is next trip to enable the operation and that they will be able to continue to put in their best to guarantee the security of our people and the peace of the other state. Barisa Samuel Osumili Osasa, Executive Secretary, Security Trust Fund. Tells us more. The trust fund is aim mainly, as established by law, is to assist security agencies in terms of funds, equipment, training and retraining, education, information, and so on and so forth, to enhance the performance of the security agencies. In this country, Delta stands out as one of the most peaceful states because people see here as a safe haven. Non-indigenous of Delta are coming here to reside because they have peace here because of uh, the way the government has handled the state uh, in terms of uh, security. In an interview session with Chief Andy Kayoma Osawota, Special Advisor to Governor Kowa on chieftaincy matters, he narrated how enabling law backing the traditional rulers council and chiefs has helped to reduce cold wars and controversies amongst royal fathers traditional rulers in delta state are closely knit they are all together they came about by that law and they are in all their domain i must tell you the hope to be more involved in government our amiable governor senator actor Ifai Okowa has done very well for the traditional rulers. They have built them a complex, an edifice for their secretariat. Hmm, small data documentary showing. Oh, yes. <laughs> mm. For this Okowa government, it did very clear say the executive and the legislature and the judiciary they work harmoniously for the interests of Deltas. Even since Okowa become governor, Delta State Legislature don't pass over 75 bills and it is known as the most vibrant for Nigeria. Mm, mm. Ah, <laughs> Papa Stonko, uh, welcome. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This governor, if I go government, the Delta State Legislature get very good working relationship with the executive arm of government. Now make us they enjoy peace, security, even good governance for Delta State. Hmm. Not only that one, the bills when Delta State has of assembly don't pass for this Okowa administration, don't help Delta State better. <laughs> My wife, you are there. Very correct. Now bring about Delta State job and wealth creation, where they empower thousands of youths, even Delta State capital territory development. Also, the Asaba Specialist Hospital. E plenty. Hmm. Talking about Asaba Specialist Hospital, it reminds me about the equity plan of the Delta State Contributory Health Scheme. Hmm. Free medication for children <laughs> yes. of 0 to 5 years yes. and pregnant women. Oh, 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 wait. So now you get bell every year. Ha, honey. Because they're free. No, you are appreciating no. the government. I see. I need to see Governor Kowa. Ha. Smart Delta. In the same vein, Mr. Adigwe Ben, Executive Secretary of the Delta State Signage and Advertising Agency, also narrated how the Delta State Signage and Advertising Bill signed in 2016 has contributed to the internally generated revenue IGR of the state. 
The governor, His Excellency, Senator Doctor Ifani Ato Cole, has done well, particularly talking about this agency. It's been something of a blessing in that uh, when you just oppose what the situation was before, now, there has been a lot of uh, improvement. Because even uh, the chairman of the local government, they have been able to admit that truly since this agency came into being, the, the volume of funds that come from this head has increased. Seriously, it's beautiful. The setting and all that, it's been, been regularized. It's nice. People have the privilege to showcase their business. It's hard beauty. In the night, you'll be walking through the city, you see billboards. you feel as if you're in Manhattan. <laughs> Still, in the business to enhance the economic value of Delta State, the Delta State Local Content Agency Law, signed in 2020, has helped to increase local content in the operations of companies in the state. In their recent stakeholder summit, major stakeholders, host communities and oil companies had a chance to air their objections and recommendations. First of all, I want to commend this new initiative because from the discussion all this while, I see a new orientation. And it's on that basis that some of us here will want to relax our anger because it is quite annoying that a company is situated in your place and they will not take your people. But the same company will continue to complain when there's an adverse of anger. Like I said, we'll go from that valley now and come to this new initiative. You know, there's a local content law that was approved sometime in 2020, and then which led to the Delta State Governor instituting the local content agency. And then, so the team is all about looking at the various ways wherein the implementation can be done in such a way that it leads to advancement and improvement of the well-being of Delta in general. We have a department that is called Monitoring and Compliance Department. So we are going to empower the Monitoring and Compliance Department to see that there is equitable distribution of this employment across those communities where these companies are operating. Employment is key, so we are going to ensure that these laws are implemented and we can only do that when we have mutual cooperation between those communities and the companies operating within um, their spheres. The violence against persons prohibition law and the Office of the Public Defender Law established and implemented by Governor Fanyokoa has strongly helped to improve justice delivery in the state. In the VAMP law, we had a, our Delta State Criminal Law of 2006 there. Rape is the penetration of the penis into the vagina. But the VAMP law now came and said no. It is all, not only the penis, any object other than the penis. You use your hand into the vagina now, it is rape. You use a stick into the vagina, it is rape. You touch a child, you know, there's nipples and everything, it is rape. And how many years? Life imprisonment. All these girls on skimpy, whatever. Now, it's posing all those parts of your body now. I am telling you people, it is an offense. Our girls be very careful. We've done a bit of sensitization and we've been able to tell them that they should come to us, that our services are for who? The downtrodden in the society. The law says that the course of action must have occurred in Delta State. We don't care where you are from, provided you reside in Delta State and you have a legal issue, come to us and we'll deliver. And our services are purely free of charge. In the healthcare sector, with the Contributory Health Insurance Commission law blossoming as a result of the full implementation by Governor Fanyokoa, Several other bills, such as Delta State Control of HIV AIDS Law, established in 2016, and HIV AIDS Anti-Discrimination and Protection Bill, passed by the Assembly in 2022, have, however, shown that the legislative and executive arms of government in Delta State are not relenting in deepening the fight to end the global HIV pandemic in Delta State. An anti-discriminatory bill against people with um, 
HIV AIDS. The essence of the bill is to make provision for laws to ensure that people who are living with HIV AIDS are not discriminated. There is no segregation, uh, stigmatization, and um, give them that um, allowance to live as ordinary citizens without any form of stigmatization. Not to lose sight of the fact that these bills undergo thorough scrutiny through public hearings before the bills are passed by the members of the assembly. For example, the HIV and AIDS Anti-Discriminatory and Protection Bill recently passed by the House of Assembly clearly went through a rigorous process to make certain every detail is dissected by the stakeholders, leaders of diverse ethnic and interest groups. All HIV screening reagents for use in the state, whether existing reagents or new ones being introduced, must be certified by NAVDAC. NAVDAC does not certify reagents. Rather, it is the Medical Lab Science Council of Nigeria. My addition is in part two, section three, that's section three, two. I would like it if it can be added to the other three that have been mentioned there, conditions in which a health professional can be mandated to do a test in a patient who is HIV positive. With this power to legislate comes several responsibilities. Little wonder, Right Honorable Sharif Uberewari regularly challenges each house committee to stay on course. We have been supportive of the executive because we know that uh, the development of the state is paramount to all of us. So we have to deny consequences, to deny heads meaning that uh, we are grassroots people. So if you look at the laws, these are developmental laws, laws that engender development for our people that will bring dividends of democracy to our people. I think Delta should commend the governor and we in the house because to a large extent, the ingenuity of the governor has been able to tell on views that we churn out, meeting the realities of time, meeting the purposes for every bill that has been passed by Delta State House. There have not been any protests or any counter reaction over such bills. It's all been accepted. The Delta State House of Assembly, under the leadership of the Speaker Sharif Uberewari, has made modest progress in its mandate areas of lawmaking, representation and oversight. Our leader, Right Honorable Sharif Uberewari, is a hard-working speaker, very humble, first among equals. He listens to his colleagues and he's a team worker. And so by the grace of God, he has been able to manage the house and then God has given him a spirit of wisdom and knowledge. And then God has also given all members of the house, particularly the principal officers, spirit of understanding, cooperation, and so we have worked well as a family. Viewed from all facets, it is therefore safe to say that the House of Assembly is a veritable instrument of the state development and Governor Ifanyokoa undeniably has not only governed the state within the ambit of the law, but also provided effective governance that deepens the tenets of democracy in Delta State. Anyone that is not blind in Delta is seeing. We are seeing bridges, we are seeing roads, we are seeing construction going up everywhere. We are seeing empowerments, jobs created. Deltans are having the field day of their lives with this government. He is one great governor that we wish we will have again and again and again. The feedback segment. This week, we received a question from Chukuka Christopher on our Instagram platform and it reads, Is the state government thinking of sponsoring any executive bill to the State House of Assembly tailored specifically to address the Yahoo Yahoo challenges in the state? That's an excellent question. Thank you very much for asking it. The government actually set up a committee to look into the internet fraud problem and prefer solutions to that problem. And what we did as part of the report, which I chaired, was to recommend the enactment of a law specifically to target uh, the Yahoo Yahoo problem. 
Uh, that is currently being considered as part of a government white paper, and I'm hopeful that uh, we will get to a stage where the House of Assembly will enact it. I want to urge all the Deltans and all Nigerians and persons from across the world to continue to watch Smart Delta. They're doing so well. It's a good means of communication of what we do in Delta State. I'm quite excited that they've been getting the information out there. If you want to know a lot about what is going on in governance and development in Delta State, continue to watch Smart Delta. You will definitely be able to get all the information that you require. Text your questions to 0812119233 or send with the hashtag access to all our social media platforms. It better run, run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is, they do it better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okoa is, they do. I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth set them higher. Okoa. I see good roads everywhere in Delta. Make the people set them cola. Come live in Delta. Send me a say. Come in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state.